We stand on the precipice of a grand revelation. The vast expanse of the cosmos has always struck humanity with wonder and mystery as we ask ourselves the question, is anyone else out there? But now, science is uncovering evidence that suggests we may not be the only ones who gaze into the stars and ponder what lies beyond our horizon. Recent scientific evidence has uncovered that the likelihood of extraterrestrial life is perhaps far beyond denial. There are three key areas that we're going to take a look at. The rising number of exoplanets contained within their star's habitable zone, where Earth-like life forms can otherwise exist. The latest detections of biosignatures and chemical markers present on planets and moons both within our solar system and beyond and the study of what's called extremophiles, which are organisms on our own Earth that have shown a tendency for survival in even the harshest environments present on our planet. When looking at the latest scientific research in astronomy and biology, it's hard not to reach a phenomenal conclusion. You're watching Liminology, and this is why scientists now believe there's life beyond Earth. Most of you are probably familiar with the Drake Equation, the mathematical formula used to estimate the number of extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy that might be able to communicate beyond their own star. But I say that's a little boring. Instead, we should prioritize what the actual hard evidence says about the matter. That is to say, what we have discovered and studied through the scientific method as opposed to the Drake Equation, which is a lot more theoretical in nature. One of the most significant discoveries in the search for extraterrestrial life has been the identification of what's called exoplanets, or planets that orbit stars outside of our solar system. To date, over 5,297 exoplanets have been discovered, according to estimates by the Extrasolar Planets Encyclopedia run by the Maiden Observatory in France. And the ones we've discovered most recently are kind of insane. Many of them are located in what's called the habitable zone of their star, where conditions could potentially support life as we know it. The exact number of exoplanets that fit this description is exactly 63 right now. An estimate by the team at the Planetary Habitability Laboratory at the University of Puerto Rico, which also ensures that the planets they study are of a size and likely composition, that is to say, rocky planets, which could actually support life. We'll get into exactly what this habitable zone entails in just a moment, but the math here is just staggering when you open it up. There are an estimated 100 billion to 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, with most of the scientific consensus leaning closer to 100 billion. The consensus on how many planets there are in the Milky Way are far less clear, but the range of estimates go from a low of about 100 billion to a high of over 8 trillion. Even if we were to use the lowest estimate of 100 billion planets, things get out of hand pretty quickly. As mentioned earlier, 63 of the 5,297 exoplanets discovered thus far are estimated to be potentially habitable planets. That is, 1 in 84 planets discovered thus far. This can be represented by the decimal 0.0119. If we multiply this by the lowest estimate of the number of planets, 100 billion, you get 1,190,476,190 potentially habitable planets. That means even if there were a mere one in a million chance that life would form on a habitable planet, there would still be 1,190 planets harboring life in our galaxy alone. Of course, that rests on an assumption. Perhaps life is even more rare than one in a million. But as we'll see as we move forward, the robustness of life on Earth tells us a lot about its likely probability of formation and survivability, and it appears to perhaps be more likely than one in a million. Another key discovery in the detection of life beyond Earth has been the detection of what's called biosignatures, as well as chemical markers, which indicate the presence of life. Mars has long been considered as a potential host for life due to its similarities to Earth, including the presence of liquid water in the past. 
In 2003, the Mars Express Orbiter detected methane in the Martian atmosphere, which is an important indicator of potential microbial life. In addition to methane, water vapor has also been detected in the Martian atmosphere. These findings led scientists to believe that the red planet may have hosted microbial life in the past, or may still contain some bacterial life beneath its surface. One of the key pieces of evidence for the sustained involvement of water in Mars' geological past is the presence of hydrated minerals, which were discovered in 2005. These are minerals whose chemical compound includes chains that only could occur with interactions with H2O, which suggests widespread presence of water in Mars' past. Enceladus, which is a moon of Saturn, is another prime suspect for life and has been found to have a subsurface ocean and geysers that contain water vapor and organic compounds, providing evidence for the potential for life in its ocean. In 2005, the Cassini spacecraft observed plumes of water vapor erupting from the surface of Enceladus, indicating the presence of a subsurface ocean. Further observations have revealed the presence of organic compounds in the plumes, adding to the potential for life in its ocean. The presence of a subsurface ocean and organic compounds makes Enceladus one of the most promising targets in the search for life beyond Earth. And in order to further explore the potential for life, missions such as the proposed Enceladus Life Finder mission are being planned to study the plumes and search for more evidence. And of course, no analysis for life within our solar system can ignore Titan, a moon of Saturn, which is the only other body in our solar system with a current standing body of liquid in the form of hydrocarbon lakes. The presence of organic compounds in its atmosphere, including methane and ethane, provides further evidence for the potential of life in these oceans. The reason why the presence of hydrocarbon lakes on Titan may indicate the presence of life in either the present or the past is because it suggests that there are active geological and meteorological processes taking place on Titan. Hydrocarbon lakes are created when liquid methane and ethane fall from the atmosphere and collect on the surface, similar to how rain in lakes form on Earth. This indicates that there is an active cycle of precipitation, evaporation, and condensation taking place on Titan. All of these factors combine to make Titan a compelling target for further study and exploration to determine if life could exist on this moon. A lesser known candidate for life is actually Triton, Neptune's largest moon, which has shown signs of potential biosignatures. In 1989, the Voyager 2 spacecraft detected signs of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane in Triton's atmosphere, which could potentially be signs of life. In 1997, the Hubble Space Telescope also discovered geysers on Triton, which could be caused by a subsurface ocean of liquid water, increasing the likelihood of life existing on this moon. However, the moon's surface temperature is around minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, making it, well, rather difficult for life as we know it to survive. So you better bring a blanket if you plan to visit any aliens living there but it remains a fascinating area of study for astrobiologists and planetary scientists. Unfortunately, once you go beyond our solar system, the evidence becomes a little more sparse due to the massive distances we are dealing with. But there have been some promising discoveries thus far when looking at a few Earth-like planets orbiting in the habitable zones of their stars. While no biosignatures are detectable quite yet with our current technology, Water vapor has been detected in the atmosphere of a few of these planets. Kepler 62f, for example, is an exoplanet located approximately 1200 light years from Earth and is part of a five planet star system. In 2013, it was found to have a large amount of water vapor in its atmosphere. K218b is another interesting exoplanet, located 111 light years away, and it was also found to have water vapor in its atmosphere in 2015. Then there's GJ1214b, HATP11b, 55 Cancri E, HD189733b, and I think my brain might melt if I continue, but you get the picture. With so many exoplanets containing water vapor in their atmospheres, and having a temperature and surface pressure sustainable for life, as well as the fact that multiple objects within our own solar system contain biosignatures associated with the formation of life, Many scientists have begun to see it as an inevitability 
that these would combine across the vast expanse of our galaxy to eventually produce a high likelihood of life forms, even if just simple microbial ones. Perhaps the most esoteric but interesting evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial life comes from the study of what's called extremophiles, which are organisms that can survive in some of the harshest environments on Earth. These organisms, such as those found in hydrothermal vents and deep underground, have pushed the boundaries of what we thought possible for life to thrive. If life can survive in these extreme conditions on Earth, it is possible that similar forms of life could exist on other planets and moons in the universe whose environments are not quite the standard average of conditions found on Earth. Take thermophilic bacteria, for example. Thermophilic bacteria are able to survive in extremely high temperatures, such as those found in hot springs and geysers. They have been found to thrive at temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius, in some cases even over 100 degrees Celsius, and they can even reproduce at these extreme conditions. This discovery, which was first made in the 1960s, suggests that life could exist in similar conditions on other planets and moons, such as those with increased volcanic activity. Halophilic bacteria are able to survive in extremely high salt concentrations, such as those found in salt lakes and oceans. They've been found to thrive in conditions with salt concentrations up to 30%, much higher than the salt concentration of regular seawater. This discovery, which was made in the 1970s, suggests that life could exist on planets and moons with high salt concentrations, such as those with large deposits of salts on their surfaces. Methanogens are bacteria that are able to produce methane gas as a byproduct of their metabolic processes. They've been found to survive in a variety of extreme environments, including in the digestive tracts of cows and in the deep ocean sediments. This discovery, made in the 1980s, suggests that life could exist on planets and moons with methane-rich atmospheres, such as Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Acidophilic bacteria are able to survive in extremely acidic conditions, such as those found in sulfuric acid lakes. They've been found to thrive in conditions with pH levels as low as 0.5, much lower than the pH levels of regular rainwater. This discovery, made in the 1990s, suggests that life could exist on planets and moons with highly acidic surfaces, such as those with large amounts of sulfuric acid, like Jupiter's moon Amalthea. Psychrophilic bacteria are able to survive in extremely cold temperatures, such as those found in Antarctica or the Arctic. They've been found to thrive at temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius, and can even reproduce at these extreme conditions. This discovery, made in the 2000s, suggests that life could exist on planets and moons with extremely cold surfaces, or even on the surface of comets. Now yes, that's a lot of bacteria, but there are also some more complex life forms to be mentioned here as well. Fungi called Deinococcus radiodurans, try saying that one 10 times fast, can survive extremely high levels of radiation and can even repair its own DNA after radiation exposure. This discovery, made in the 2010s, suggests that life can exist on planets and moons with high levels of radiation, such as those that are close to their stars or those without a particularly protective magnetic field. The lack of mammalian or plant life forms surviving in these truly extreme temperatures doesn't bode well for the potential for intelligent life beyond Earth on planets highly differing from the standard conditions present on our planet. But with such a small sample size, just one planet, it's really hard to say anything definitively. With all this in consideration, we are on the cusp of a new era of discovery, where the possibility of extraterrestrial life is no longer relegated to the mere science fiction. The evidence we have gathered thus far suggests that life may be a cosmic constant, and that we are not alone in the grand symphony of the universe. The search for extraterrestrial life is not just a quest for answers, but a journey to understand our place in the cosmos. So, let us continue to gaze upon the stars with wonder and curiosity, for the secrets they hold may one day change our understanding of ourselves and our world forever.
Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. We have another awesome video about all of the crazy and diverse moons of Jupiter that we made just a couple weeks ago. You can click this little image here to check that one out. Some of these moons are just absolutely insane. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more, and thanks for watching.